cabinet. This is a motion regarding affordable purchase of housing. And uh, we welcome the Minister and we welcome Deputy Owen O'Brien, who is going to move the motion. And with your colleagues, Deputy O'Brien, you have 20 minutes. I, I so move, uh, Ciaran Corla. Ciaran Corla, uh, the question I want to start with today is, what has Fianna Fáil got against home ownership? Uh, every time that party has been in government in recent times, house prices have risen and home ownership <coughs> has fallen and fallen dramatically. The last time Micheál Martin was in the Cabinet, the tail end of that period, the current minister was a, a new backbencher. Not only did house prices rise to their highest point in the history of the state, but home ownership fell at a more dramatic pace than we have seen before or since. And now, back in government, Fianna Fáil back in charge of housing, and we're back to the bad old days. According to the latest figures from the CSO, in a month or two, we will hit and pass the Celtic Tiger peak for house prices. And again, thanks to Fianna Fáil, home ownership is a distant reality for far too many people. And the reason why, is, of course, is the policies that Minister Bryan has introduced. And let's look at some of them before I talk to our motion. One of his first acts as Minister for Housing was to expand the highly controversial so-called help to buy scheme. 60% of the people who benefited from that didn't need it. They had deposits and mortgages, according to an independent Oireachtas report. Uh, and large numbers of organisations and independent economists said it would push up house prices. Next, we had the shared equity loan scheme. Now, it's been mired in controversy for almost two years because of the strong opposition from NESC, SRI, the Central Bank, even the IMF last week criticising uh, the potential risk uh, of the scheme. And what will it do? Again, uh, push up house prices. And then today, not being satisfied with all of that, Minister O'Brien introduces what has to be the most crazy housing scheme that I've heard uh, from uh, any government in recent years. He's going to give large private developers subsidies of up to 120,000 in Dublin, up to 144,000 outside of Dublin, with no reduction in price for the purchaser and no affordability dividend. A chronic waste of taxpayers' money at best, locking in unaffordable uh, excessive prices for apartments and at best driving them even further upwards. These are the reasons why the latest CSO figures show house prices rising by 15% across the state, 27% in border areas, median house price across the state, 282,000. But in the minister's own constituency, the median new house price is almost half a million euros. That is you get what you get when Fianna Fáil are in government. Now, the minister, I'm sure, will claim that his affordable housing fund, uh, f funding for local authorities to deliver genuine affordable homes, is another measure to tackle the problems that we're raising tonight. But as the figures he gave me by way of parliamentary question last week, which we published this week, show, uh, that stands in stark contrast to the hundreds of millions Fianna Fáil give to large developers. On average, we'll get 1,500 units a year through that fund, although it'll be two or three years before we get there. Uh, and the uh, uh, annual targets for affordable purchase homes through this scheme are appallingly low, only 400 in Dublin City, only less than 200 in the Minister's own constituency, 30 to 45 a year in the commuter belt, uh, some cities as low as 15. Any wonder people can't put an affordable roof over their head. But there is a better way. Uh, and the motion we've outlined tonight, uh, building on uh, uh, the costed alternative proposals in our alternative budget, show how you can do it. Stop giving huge gifts to large developers and speculators and invest all of that money in the direct delivery of large volumes of genuinely affordable homes to purchase through local authorities, approved housing bodies, co-op like O'Coolon and community housing trusts. We estimate that you need at least 4,000 affordable purchase homes a year, genuinely affordable purchase homes built uh, on public land. And as the Minister knows, our innovative uh, uh, leasehold proposal would ensure not only are they genuinely affordable, but you would build up year on year a growing number of privately owned, privately tradable, but permanently affordable homes, not just for the first purchaser, but for every purchaser into the future. We also think you should scrap all of these crazy schemes that you claim assist people in buying homes when, in fact, uh, uh, there's no uh, entry level criteria, people get access to public money who don't need it, uh, and they drive up public homes. And all of that money could be used to deliver the 4,000 genuinely affordable homes uh, a year that we are calling for. 
We also think every single local authority should be able to apply to the scheme. The affordability test uh, through the housing needs demand assessment uh, was uh, 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 badly designed, and the Minister has made some concessions in that regard. But the key here is this. The one thing government can control is the amount of its investment on its land to develop, develop genuinely affordable homes. You are not doing that. It's not in your plan. And until you reverse that, this affordable housing crisis is going to get worse. And on that basis, I commend the motion to the House. Minister, I want to share my hearing again, once again, debating affordable housing and the desperate need to deliver affordable housing. Cork City meet their tar targets every year and have for years. In actual fact, a lot of years they exceed them. Um, right now, Cork City Council have are given the target of 278 affordable houses to deliver, and they're actually in the pipeline to be delivered. But the problem here is the targets are too small and not ambitious enough. If we take my colleague Owen O'Brien, Deputy O'Brien's targets of 4,000 a year, that would equate to 400 a year for Cork City Council, which is 10% of the social housing stock in Cork, which would turn out at 1,600. So the difference between your plan of 278 and our plan of 1,600, and that's the fundamental difference. You're not ambitious enough. You don't understand what's needed, what we need to deliver. And your figures address a drop in the ocean. My fear is that this government is so out of touch with the, and your priorities are so misled that the housing crisis will continue to get worse. And Minister, in my main speech in 2009, I said the Cox City Council, we had a housing crisis. Here we are now, 13 years later, and it's worse now than it ever was, and that's on your year watch and Feeney Gale's watch who delivered it. Instead of falsely trying to accuse Sinn Féin of objecting to housing minister, which you do virtually every opportunity you get, right? You would be better off with looking at understanding why a person appointed to onboard Panada continued to vote in housing developments, even though after you uh, appointed a senior counsel to investigate serious allegations in, in relation to conflicts of interest in onboard Panada. Why are certain people in high positions, people who, co who are friends with government ministers, who weren't born the T-shirt, feel they're above the law and above this government? The problem here is priorities are all wrong. Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael prioritise speculators, developers, where Sinn Féin prioritise ordinary people and the delivery of affordable housing. My colleague Ola Brain is bringing forward solutions. It's all about solutions. But, Minister, when it comes to it, you're all about politics and looking after the big people, the rich people, the developers, and that's the fundamental difference. And that's why this makes it. If we have put in this motion here today, deliver this, Owen O'Brien will make a real difference to ordinary people's lives. People my age feel like they have literally no chance, no chance when they look into their future at ever having home ownership. And as my colleagues have said, that is under your watch. I have the common theme with my friends, with co-workers that I've had in the past, is that they work day in, day out, and nothing gets easier. They feel they're completely locked out of home ownership. And what we're seeing at the moment is that the increase in the cost of living is simply squeezing people more and more in terms of their ability to, to rent and indeed to afford housing. And what we know is that at, at, at this time of the evening, people my age will be going home um, after a long, hard day's work, commuting long distances and probably haven't had quite a tough day of work. And where are they going home to? They're going home to over, overcrowded, cramped, um, situations are going into back to their parents' box, box rooms, trying to scrimp and save as much as they can, so that they can, so that they can at some point be able to own their own home. And what minister are you saying to those people in Galway City? What are you saying to those people in Galway County? Well, what you're saying, minister, is that in Galway City, you'll deliver 30 affordable homes a year. In Galway County, you'll deliver 45 affordable homes a year. That's nothing for the people that are waiting, the people who have been trying year in, year out to save the money to, to be able to get their mortgage, that does nothing for them. And one thing that I've seen from government parties, spokespeople um, and elected reps across Galway, time in and time out, telling us that 
There's a brilliant development coming on board for affordable housing in Galway City. And week after week, I get people locally contacting me, asking me, when will these affordable homes be delivered for us so that we can actually maybe have a chance to, to, to own our own home? Well, only this week, Minister, I found out that they won't be available until 2024. Minister, that's two years away. See, for people who can't afford their rents, for people who've had to move in with their parents, with their grandparents, that's simply not good enough. And Minister, we know what is needed. We know that supply is needed. But when we see supply in Galway, what we see is build to rent that's completely unaffordable for people um, who are working in and uh, working day in, day out. What we need is 4,000 homes being delivered, as my colleague Owen O'Brien has said. Well, we need them as at affordable prices. Trace Lulishan and uh, Mulla O and Chakto Bryn Agus Islair, Gwilnis Brookena, Ata Egan Ryan, Neil Sheed, uh, Dohnuk Galor, uh, Agus Ni Khurig Sheed Osar Gor Galor Tihi in Akfenha, uh, Agus uh, Ta on Gear Kim Tihi Akta, uh, Egairi Nis Massa, Galor Slitta, Gilmorvor Lerain, Misna Bioganus. I think it, you know, it's been said in some of the previous speeches, but when you talk to young people, when I talk to them in my constituency in Cork, the the attitude is like, what? What are we supposed to do? What are we? Um, what chance have we got? We're going out. We're getting a job, sometimes well-paid jobs, uh, and it's just not possible. It's just not possible to afford a home. Uh, they can't afford to rent. They can't afford to buy. They very definitely cannot afford to do both. Uh, and home ownership is absolutely out of reach, and for many of them, they don't qualify uh, for social housing. Uh, and more and more. The future to them seems uncertain, it seems insecure, it seems impossible to plan for family, for work, for anything like that, because they don't have any confidence of having a secure home. And they, they feel that their future is being taken away from them. And that is, that is the attitude that I encounter on the ground. And things are, in many respects, getting worse. Um, house prices have increased by 30% since 2016. Rents have increased by 44%. Cork City is the third highest rent in the state, averaging over 1,300 rising. Though I would say a lot of people would say that that actually isn't too bad, given some of the examples that you would see around the city, 1,400, 500, much more than that for relatively modest homes. The government haven't shown adequate ambition to make housing affordable. They're failing ordinary workers and families in Cork and across the state. And these targets, they're not anywhere near enough in terms of what's needed in terms of affordable housing. 76 affordable homes in the city a year, 38 in the county. The population of the county council is about 440,000. Um, like, are we expecting the county to do the miracle of the loaves and fishes with 38 houses? It's, it's simply not going to be anywhere near enough to meet the amount of people that are being knocked off of the housing list, not qualifying, or not being able to get an affordable mortgage. It's not going to go anywhere near far enough. And those, those young people are continue going to fear for their future. Um, Can Corla, not a single affordable house will be provided over the next four years in either counties, Monaghan or Cavan, that I represent. Now, that's not speculation or a guess on my part. That is actually the target number of affordable houses that the government have set. I suppose some might say, well, finally, there's a housing target that the government will meet. But to me, I think that that is a scandalous, uh, a, a, a scandalous um, f statement of fact. Now, the minister's response or his justification will essentially be that house prices aren't expensive enough in those regions to warrant being considered under the affordable housing scheme, despite the fact that house prices in the border region increased by almost 25% last year, 17% the year before. I'd like to know precisely how high the prices have to get before affordable houses will be provided, because the truth is that home ownership is now already beyond the reach of most young workers and families, and at the same time, rents are completely out of control. So I want government to accept that they are either incapable of recognising the scale of the challenge or admit that they're not serious about meeting it. Because it's one or the other, Minister. We cannot say to, uh, as you do, Minister, in this House from time to time, that you're serious about home ownership, that you're serious about delivering houses, and have a situation where a family, um, a couple with four children, 
earning €27,000. Can't get on the social housing list in my county, can't pay the rent, and will never be in a position to buy their own home, and that your government will provide nothing in terms of affordable housing option to them. So this is time to get real. Either we accept that Owner Brin's policies um, are there, ready to be implemented and will actually make a difference, or we carry on, as before, with one false promise after another, one false dawn after another, because the truth has now been very evident. This government, the parties that make up this government, simply do not have the capacity to address the housing needs of our people. Carla. Minister, last month, myself and my colleague, Dr Owner Brin, met with the officials from the Housing Department at Kildare County Council. They were diplomatic in their answers, but it is clear that they are working with one hand tied behind their back. Finance decisions from the department have taken too long. Approved housing bodies are hamstrung. While many people may be critical of Kildare County Council, I know from first-hand experience that they are seriously understaffed and under-resourced. It has taken up to three months to get a reply to a basic representation sent to Kildare County Council, and every housing reply says that there are 6,600 people on the housing list. The wait time is 10 to 12 years. 10 to 12 years, Minister. And they must find their own HAP property. You would need the miracle, and Deputy um, O'Leary spoke about this, of the loaves and fishes to see a HAP as a solution. There are just 28 rental properties available in the whole county today. Just one of those is within the HAP limits. There are only three properties under €1,000 a month. It is clear that the government's private market approach is not working, and there are lots of people suffering because of it. I have a list of 13 families, nine couples and 11 single people whose landlords have given them notice to quit because they are selling the property. And the current rules do not allow the council to buy property with the tenant in situ. I have couples in emergency accommodation who are being accommodated separately. The nuclear family used to be held in high regard. It doesn't seem like that anymore. I've been helping a mother who's raising four children alone since her husband left. This week, she was hard to explain to four young children that the sign that the landlord has put up outside her home meant that they would have to move. She is facing emergency accommodation if the, if the council can actually find some and the difficulty of getting kids to school in another town while trying to hold down a, her part-time job. And all these are victims of poor government policy. The present government's policies are too investor and developer orientated. My colleague Ona Brin, when he is housing minister, will change this. We saw with the recent affordable housing targets that this government lacks the will and ambition to address the housing crisis that they have created. And you have created this. There are proposing to build just 45 affordable houses in Kildare, 45, per year over the next five years. This is barely a drop in the ocean of what is needed. You're out of touch, government, and you're out of time. Uh, thanks, Councillor Cora, and welcome to the opportunity to speak on this motion. It's very important uh, what we're putting forward here this evening as part of our strategy to tackle the housing crisis uh, by significantly increasing the number uh, and delivery of affordable homes to buy. And it's important that we have that a big element of home purchase in our housing programmes. This would make a massive difference to people across the country, and especially in Niche Offaly, where the housing crisis is having a devastating effect on the lives of too many people. We have thousands of people trapped in private rental accommodation where rents are out of control. In Leash, three bedroomed house starts at 1,058 per month, in Offaly, 1,040. And the common asking price now is between 12, 1,200 and 1,400 euro a month for a house to rent. Sky high, too high. Many workers and families have, uh, they have incomes that are too high for the council social housing waiting list, but too low to get approved for a mortgage from the bank. Workers on low and middle incomes, and this is the problem, workers on low and middle incomes are locked out of home ownership. They earn too much for the, the council and social housing list, but are trapped and are, but yet they're paying sky high rents, which are actually higher than what a mortgage would cost. I've had cases where people are paying 12 and 1300 euros and they can get a mortgage, if they could get a mortgage for, to, to buy the same size house, they'd be paying 800 a month. It's crazy stuff. In Leash Offaly, a couple earning over, wait for it, 500 euros, 504 euros a week are over the income threshold for council and social housing, while a couple with two children are over the limit if they earn just 528. What are they supposed to do? Now, I raised this with you, and you sent a reply to me there two weeks ago about this. 
and they keep getting the same replies that the officials are looking at it. You need to sort that. We need to do more to help these workers. We need to deliver affordable homes to purchase. Figures provided to us, to, to Deputy O'Brien, this in the last couple of weeks here, I have them here in front of me, they, they revealed that the government target under the, under the Affordable Housing Fund scheme from 2022 to 2026 for leash, for all a leash, is an average of nine houses per year, 38 in total, and none, not one single house for Offaly, totally unacceptable. We're calling on the government to revise the, the affordable home targets agreed with local authorities and deliver an average of at least 4,000 4, affordable purchase homes a year across the state over the next four years. More importantly, we need to deliver affordable homes that can be sold at prices that working people can afford. The housing crisis is devastating the lives of workers across the country and families, and the government and every one of us must do more to ensure people can buy a genuinely affordable home, Minister. But Sinn Féin's affordable housing... Please. Deputy Tully, sharing with Deputies Brown, Crow and Clark. Um, Minister, there's a section of our population who just cannot afford to buy a home in Ireland today. This cohort, often called the squeezed middle, who themselves would say pay for everything and are entitled to nothing. But house prices continue to spiral upwards. I mean, the CSO Residential Property Price Index report for February 2022 shows that house prices across the state have risen by 13.5%. And the median new build house price for first time buyers is now 335,000. I mean, that's not affordable for most people. And what's your response? A five-year total target for local authority affordable housing delivery of 5,555 houses. It's dreadfully unambitious. I mean, an entire generation are locked out of home ownership, and this government are only funding local authorities to build 7,550 affordable houses between now and 2026. I mean, worse still is that they seem to think that there's no housing crisis in many parts of the country. My own constituency, for example, not one of these just over 7,500 affordable houses are to be delivered in either Cavan or Monaghan. Yet the DAP.ie house price report of 2022 shows an 18.2% year-on-year average house price increase in Cavan from quarter one of last year to quarter two of 2022, and a 15.87% year-on-year increase in Monaghan for the same period. People simply cannot afford to get on the housing ladder. People who lost their home to relationship breakdown or mortgage repossession face an uncertain future in the private rental sector. Increasingly, though, the alternative option of renting is not possible for many people. The latest report from the Residential Tenancy Board indicates that rent increases for new tenancies grew by 9% statewide in the last three months of 2021. And once again, if I refer to my own constituency of Cavan Monaghan, rents increased by 6.6% and 15.5% respectively over the same period. And just the government are not doing enough. I mean, the affordable purchase targets are embarrassingly low. Only 18 counties are included in the targets. The rest, like Cavan Monaghan, will have zero delivery of local authority affordable housing. We need an average of at least 4,000 genuinely affordable houses for working people each year. And we need them built by each local authority. So, Please do something, Minister, to help the many, many people who cannot afford to buy their house. They cannot afford to rent. They're not eligible for HAP or RAS. They're not eligible for any sort of rent supplement. And they're forced to live with parents. I mean, it's disgraceful in this day and age. Thank you. Uh, uh, the amount of people who are either locked out of home ownership or even locked out of rental accommodation is genuinely staggering. If we leave out the statistics for a minute, <clears throat> every deputy here will know from the calls they get to their office that there is a fundamental problem in the availability of accommodation. No family type is immune to this, whether they are families with young children, single parents with limited means, or single people. We have heard sudden and horrific stories from them all, and have tried to assist them in a housing market that is out of their reach, whether that is to rent or to purchase. It is awful to see people in this situation, and it is appalling to know that the options to help them are extremely limited. When faced with a situation like this, it's common sense to devise a plan that tackles the housing crisis from every angle, whether that is from a rental point of view or from a purchasing perspective. But this government doesn't think that. That is apparent from the affordable housing targets up to 2016. And Minister, you talk, and you have a cheek to talk about narratives and the truth. You have failed, just like other TDs on that side of the floor that have been housing ministers. 
The Con to Death Debt IE's latest house price report, average listing price in Tipperary increased year on year by 14.3%. These price hikes contribute to local authority housing lists, which are creaking at the seams. At the same time, families are in hostels or sleeping on floors or sofas at their homes or fr- friends or families. Yet, outrageously, Tipperary doesn't even feature in the government's ambitious affordable housing targets up to 2026. This is at a time when not only in our local authority unable to provide accommodation for those on our lengthy housing list, they are also struggling and are sometimes unable to provide emergency accommodation for those in need. Thousands of euros have been spent weekly on getting emergency accommodation in B&Bs and ho- hotels instead of providing councils of the capacity, got capacity, which I'm calling for. Yet the government would prefer this than to allow local authorities like the Prairie County Council access affordable housing fund. We are calling for all local authorities to be allowed access to the affordable housing fund and to stop this practice of exclusion that destroys lives and severely affects families. These unambitious affordable purchase home targets must be revised to deliver on average at least 4,000 affordable purchase houses a year from 2022 to 2026. The government must also contribute or stop contributing to the rising housing costs by scrapping the Help to Buy scheme and shared equity loan schemes, which push up prices and divert the funding into delivery of genuinely affordable houses. And last, the three priorities must learn that given massive handouts to big developers to de- deliver overpriced houses never works because struggling home buyers and the taxpayer will always be the big losers in this situation. Go, Margaret, Count Carla. Margaret uh, Carla. I stood here almost two years ago during a Sinn Féin motion on the need to respect the demands of Irish people to do something, anything to mend the utterly broken system that's the Irish housing market. Housing was one of the biggest issues of the 2020 election and the delivery of affordable housing was something that the new government made a lot of noise about it. Two years later, we're asking here tonight, where are the promised housing? The government's affordable housing targets lack ambition, as many of the contributors have said here tonight. And the poor delivery is not the fault of councils or councillors, but of a government that could not deliver affordable workable, affordable scheme. Minister, affordable is not affordable in many areas, as you know. We need at least 4,000 affordable homes a year and not the 7,000 every five years in the current plant. South Dublin County Council, which is my own area, will only see a roughly 230 affordable homes a year. Schemes in Killinarden, Clamboris and Ratcool had over 3,000 expressions of interest. In one area, 297 couples wanted to be considered for 16 houses. That was just in one estate. So the demand is there, Minister, but we're not meeting that demand. Affordable housing would serve to normalise the housing market, take people out of the rental market and bring houses down for everyone. Many just can't afford to buy, can't afford to rent. So what are they to do? There's no way that the majority of young people in my area could afford to buy a home. So if you're paying obscene rents, the rising cost of living, average incomes are not enough. If you're lucky to get a deposit, you then have to get in ahead of the investment firm with their unlimited funds who can outbid anyone. So two years later, government uh, government, fr- from this government, we need a massive housing building programme on public land and a scheme that delivers affordable housing to people that need them. Handouts to big developers who deliver overpriced homes will do nothing for the struggling home buyers or hard pressed taxpayers. We need a change, Minister. Thank you very much, David Clark. Minister, the extent of your affordable housing plans in Longford Westmead have been laid bare and for anybody needing a local authority delivered home, they are soul destroying. Yesterday was the first time I have ever seen a parliamentary question reply discussed in such detail in a local shop and the commentary was absolutely damning. When not one single affordable home for Longford was included in that response to Deputy O'Brien. None. Zero. Now, last September, I read into the record of this house the local media coverage of affordable housing. When the Director of Services expressed his fears as correspondence received by his department returned not very encouraging insights as to where Longford fits in the government's plan. It's now crystal clear 
where Longford sits. It's in black and white. It sits nowhere for local authority delivered affordable homes. I would like to know, Minister, what exactly has been done to right this inherent wrong. I, have you received the housing needs and demand analysis from Long Longford County Council as discussed recently at committee? And what actual engagement has there been to ensure that the county of Longford is not excluded? And what was the true purpose of that much lauded backbencher, I must say, letter to your department? From 22 to 26, your so-called affordable housing targets, local authority delivered for Westmead is 76. 15 houses on average annually. I have literally had more constituents with notices to quit in a day in my Westmead offices. What my constituents of Longford Westmead need is a dramatic increase in direct capital investment to local authority genuinely affordable homes to buy. The CSO price index shows an 11% increase in Longford, 9.2% increase in Westmead on the median price of a home. Despite your rhetoric about believing in home ownership, rhetoric does not build properties. Investment does, and investment in local authorities is what will meet the need of affordable housing. Thank you, Deputy. Can I just finish with this, Ciarán Corley? We seem to have ever-changing and very contradictory interpretations of what the word lease means coming from government. After all, we've listened to the Taoiseach telling us that leasing the National Maternity Hospital is the equivalent Thank of you, owning. Uh, I see around the county of Kerry, from Toosist to Tarbert to Touring Cahill and over to Ceown Traw, the results, the problems and the fallout of government policy and previous government policy over the past 10 years. I see queues of 30 to 40 people seeking to rent a home. It's practically impossible to rent. Homelessness is on the increase. Vacant homes aren't being turned around fast enough. Compulsory purchase orders to get housing back into, uh, into use is practically non-existent. People waiting on the housing list for 15 years. The decision to outsource social housing to the market 10 years ago, in tandem, I believe, with the abolition of the town councils of Tralee, Stowell and Killarney, was a disaster. I also see the lack of sewage treatment plants, wastewater treatment, in places like Glen Bay, Castle, uh, uh, Castle Gregory, Abidorney, Feenet, you cannot build more than two houses together, or two houses together even because uh, of the lack of any water system. Uh, on the, at the other end, people can't afford to purchase houses. It's hardly surprising when figures from the CSO tell us that house prices in, in Kerry rose, or in, in the southwest region, rose 15.4%. In 2020, house prices in Kerry increased more there than in any other county. The DAF.ie report paints a similar picture, with prices in Kerry up 7.5% for a one-bedroom apartment, 142 for a two-bedroom terraced house, and 18.1% for a three-bed semi-D. As a result, in 2021, house prices in Kenmare and Dingle were up 10%. Truly up 15% and in Killarney a staggering 18.5%. Government responses are overly reliant on a subsidy to developers, increasing inflation even before the current inflation crisis. The shared equity scheme, it should be abandoned. I know people who went into the last one and after 20 years they still only own half their home. A builder recently presented me with a folder of price increases for builders providers with near monthly increases across the board from providers both in housing, both finance and purchased, increasingly provided by private capital looking for a return, price increases are built into public and government policy. Ordinary people are struggling, especially those who availed of the PIPs and who sold their homes in negative equity. They can't avail of the Fresh Start scheme, which is only open to those who have availed of statutory insolvency schemes. Workers and families need proper, solution, proper solutions, and I encourage everyone to support the motion. Um, Minister, house prices are out of control and have been for some time now. The price of homes keeps going up while the available income for many families keeps going down due to inflation. Huge numbers of our people have been locked out of home ownership and the efforts of the Minister for Housing to address this have been woeful. On a daily basis, my constituency office in Limerick receives calls of desperation from people who have been locked out of home ownership. 
These are people who struggle to save a deposit. They are not fortunate enough to avail of a cash injection, but our parents they are trying to buy their own, to, to buy on their own home, and a lack of support to the government offer, offering them is galling. Is it any wonder that the average income family or new couple struggle to get on the housing market? In Limerick, the average price of a house purchase has risen by 8.2 per cent year on year. For young families, a three-bedroom semi-detached house in Limerick will cost on average 10.3 per cent more than it did this time last year, with the average price of such units starting at €212,000. In some of the most sought-after suburbs, the price of a three-bedroom terrace is almost a quarter of a million euro. The average income for families, the average income families are caught between a rock and a hard place. On one hand, they are locked out of purchasing their own home, but on the other, they earn too much to avail of council supplied housing or support through HAP scheme. The social housing income thresholds have not been changed since 2011. This is something that should be rectified, and the income cut-off levels need to be increased to reflect inflation. All the while house, house prices go up, according to DAF.ie, we now have seven consecutive quarters of house prices increasing. Coupled with that, we see the number of new homes available at their lowest level since January 27. Prices are going up, but supplies are decreasing. This is happening on Minister O'Brien's watch. It is happening because government policies such as help to buy and shared equity inflate house prices. This should come as, as no shock to anybody. It has been forewarned that this would be the outcome. It is recognised that there is lack of local authority affordable housing, yet the Minister seems to pick his delivery targets out of thin air. Using Limerick as an example, the local authority affordable housing delivery targets for 2022 to 2026 stands at 264 units, or 52 per year. Minister, there are over 2,203 people on the housing list in Limerick with a further 344 awaiting the transfer, and your unambitious targets will have, no, will have no, next to no impact on these housing figures. People are desperate now, Minister, across Limerick. We have generations of families living in the same home because rent is too high, purchase of social housing are all out of their reach. So solutions, Minister, we have to, you have to step up to the plate here. We need to re, re, revise the affordable purchase house home targets. They are insufficient. Local authorities must be allowed to access affordable housing fund. Income thresholds for social housing support must be dramatically increased, increased. and the failed shared equity loan, equity loan and help to buy schemes need to be done to cover my good. Chair uh, and Minister, um, I'd like to just put on the record my response to a number of uh, uh, factually incorrect claims that Minister Bryan made during his contribution earlier. As always, it's a pity he doesn't remain to the end of the debate, but we're more than happy to have your presence here as, as usual. The first is Darrell Bryan criticised the figures upon which this motion is based. Um, he said in the parliamentary question that it also refers to possible affordable purchase homes to be delivered by the Land Development Agency and Part 5. The problem is the overwhelming majority of counties listed in the parliamentary question won't have any LDA homes because the Land Development Agency is precluded from being active in those areas. Uh, and in those local authority areas where the LDA is active, uh, very, very few affordable purchase homes will be delivered until 2024, 2025. And even then, we don't know if they'll be genuinely affordable. So to say that somehow there's also this as yet unquantified number of affordable purchase homes by the LDA is simply not the case. Likewise, the Minister well knows that the changes to Part 5 of the Planning and Development Act only apply to land that's purchased this year. And therefore, if the land is purchased this year, it's unlikely there'll be a planning application until next year, which means those homes won't be delivered for two to three years after. Uh, uh, so again, no affordable purchase homes are likely to be delivered during the lifetime of this government uh, via the changes to Part 5 of the Planning and Development Act. It's also important to remember that a significant number of the homes that are listed in the parliamentary question reply won't be affordable at all, and O'Devney Gardens, Oscar Trainer Road, uh, and the lands in Donabate are good examples where the all-in cost of the affordable home, the full price the uh, uh, hard-working family will have to pay, is in excess of €400,000 uh, between the initial uh, uh, purchase price and the shared equity loan repayment. Uh, hardly what uh, I think either you or I, Minister, if we were being honest with each other, would call affordable. And then finally, the suggestion that the shared equity loan scheme delivers affordable housing is absolutely ludicrous, because in fact you can use that product to buy properties up to uh, uh, 400 to 500,000 euros. They are not affordable homes, uh, uh, and the minister uh, knows that only too well. Minister O'Brien. Uh, also criticised what he said was Sinn Féin's threadbare housing policy. Of course, he does this all the time. Uh, he, he waived a summary document that I had sent to him a number of years ago, which is based on extensive not only policy propositions, documents, but draft circulars, uh, and year-on-year -year of alternative fully-costed uh, uh, budgets. 
uh, and again, I think it's very disingenuous for the Minister to do that. He also once again repeated the claim, and it is not true, that the government is investing €4 billion Euros in public housing this year. It is not. Go and look at the budget book that the Minister for Finance announced in this chamber last October. The total direct capital investment by the state and local authorities and approved housing bodies is just under £1.5 billion, only £100 million more than the year before. Our proposal is to double direct capital investment by the state up to about £3 billion for the delivery of social and genuinely affordable homes. The Minister is right. We discussed this last week. The completions are up and commencements are up, but completions are up only uh, uh, to meet this year's target of 24,000 homes. No, we're close to the 40,000 homes that we need. Uh, and of those 24,000 homes that will deli be delivered, how many will be genuinely affordable? How many will be even for sale on the open market? Far, far too few. And likewise with commencements, because there's an increasing number of apartment developments, they'll take two to three years to complete. So this government could well be out of office before any of these things start to change. Probably the most uh, disingenuous thing the Minister said, of course, was he criticised Sinn Féin's affordable housing proposal, and once again he misrepresented it. So let me repeat. We have a very specific and innovative proposal for affordable purchase, which would ensure not only that the property is affordable to the first purchaser, but every subsequent purchaser. It's very simple. You buy the house, the house is yours, you can do with it what you want, but we don't sell you the public land and you are able to use that land for free indefinitely as your children and grandchildren uh, can be, so long as you don't rent it out to the private rental sector. And when you sell it, you sell it to another affordable uh, home purchaser into the future, index link for inflation and home improvements. That way we would build up tens of thousands of privately owned, permanently, uh, or privately owned and privately tradable, but permanently affordable homes, an eminently sensible idea. The problem is, is the government simply doesn't understand the depth of the crisis. They're not investing enough, and the targets from the minister in the parliamentary question reply demonstrate that clearly, which is why I stand over this motion. I stand over the call to double capital investment to deliver 20,000 public homes a year, and in particular, 4,000 genuinely affordable homes for working families year on year from now until 2026. Anything short of that isn't acceptable, and that's why we won't support the government's amendment. Thank you, Chair. Well, good Deputy O'Brien, uh, now that the debate has concluded, I need to ask the question, um, the following question on Amendment 1, in the name of the Minister for Housing, that the amendment be made. Na chakti ata er hev na keshta abradish ta. Oh. Na chakti ata in a khina abradish neil. Neil. Shilam gulan keshrita. Votal. Votal. Okay. The division is deferred so until the weekly division time slot.